Good evening, friends. Let's continue with the exploration of Siddharameshwar Maharaj's words. You know, before that, I would like to share one incident. I read it in Ramesh Balsekar's book, Guru Purnima. And he narrated how it was uh, the final days of Siddharameshwar Maharaj. And he was in Bombay. And he asked his 10 or 12 disciples that they should ask him one by one whatever questions they had left. So he called them into the room one by one. Now out of these disciples, Nisarg Datta Maharaj was also sitting outside waiting for his turn. But his guru never called him. So Nisarg Datta Maharaj was quite upset. And then the Guru walked out of the room. So he asked the Guru, what is this? Am I also not worthy of your 10 minutes of time? And uh, Siddha Rameshwar Ji put his hand on Maharaj's shoulder and said, what? What questions would you have to ask? So that was a most beautiful exchange. Okay, so here we go. This is a fascinating quote on anger. All is untrue in this world. Then how can just one cause which evoked anger be true? I don't think this needs any explanation. Then again, practical advice. One should be good to those who harm you. To be with one's own nature is the main requisite of a realized person. One should never be angry. As we are the inner self, Brahman, no one can insult us. So one who gives us trouble liberates us from the ego of the body. This is what we should understand. If you put this into practice, it will become your habit. The mother of Pondicherry has said that if there are people who give you blows, give you abuses, it does not mean we have to come down to their level in order to receive the blows. So many masters have said that people who are mean to you, rough with you, abuse you, are actually taking away your karma. So you should be thankful to them. Fundamentally, they are abusing the body. That is the point being made. They are not individuals doing something and that is how we perceive them and that is why we get upset. So there is a big lesson here. When Siddha Rameshwar Ji says one should be good to those who harm you. It is an opportunity. an opportunity to awaken to one's true nature. To behave nobly means to let each one act according to his or her desire. Otherwise, one forms a habit of censuring others. One should never speak ill of others. Also, never bother yourself with petty observations about others. Do not meddle in others' affairs. This is called charity. Do not waste your time getting involved in others' affairs. 
वंस अगेन वेरी प्रैगमेटिक एडवाइस इट रिमाइंड्स मी ऑफ व्हाट रमेश जी वुड से फॉरगेट अबाउट मेडलिंग इन अदर्स अफेयर्स बट डू नॉट गिव एडवाइस अनलेस आस्ट फॉर बिकॉज वेन वन डज दैट देन वन इज अज्यूम्ड वन नोज बेटर and this he often said if the universe asks you for advice then by all means provide it but do not give it out of your own volition thinking you know better about the situation because you don't now here siddharameshwar ji says to live in the mother's womb is a term in hell in that there is no place to escape for 9 months the excretion of the fetus is linked to its mouth through a tube and another tube linked to the nose is for the urine this is what is meant by a term in hell when this prana flows out of the body it has to settle somewhere it cannot remain without a body there is an intense desire to acquire a body and therefore one acquires a body if one gives up love for the body and adopts love of the self one gets rid of the body it is sin which makes one take on an endless number of births in the human birth one is aware of the knowledge i am therefore human birth is considered to be the highest or most evolved there is no greater bondage for anyone other than a human being and there is no meaner species like the human anywhere further there is no creature who worries and frets like a human being but despite all this the human being is the pinnacle of creation this is because only the human being has self awareness and therefore the power to discriminate between real and unreal this is a most beautiful summation of this subject of advaita actually because that is why after all we are human beings homo sapiens sapiens man who is aware that he is aware other species do not have this i am aware that i am so as you have seen in all that we have read from sindarameshwar maharaj's passages he emphasizes that this is therefore a precious human birth not to be wasted in just material pursuits pleasures mundane activities and he implores all his disciples devotees students to delve deeper into the life spiritual he tells them not to have desires not to be too attached to things and so on and so forth and you have to picture this dialogue happening perhaps almost 100 years ago now you see so in the context of the consciousness and awareness at that time this is what was expounded and it is so pertinent and you will also see that all the concepts of the i am you are not the body how these basic tenets have come down through this lineage in different words in keeping with the times but the same teaching has flowed in this next piece he is referring to what krishna says 
in the kalki avatar which is the 10th and final incarnation of vishnu i become knowledge itself and i alone spread the message through the medium of knowledge it is this that i have come to tell you i have now given you the ultimate knowledge this is the knowledge of brahman see this reminds me of an incident kalki avatar so there were 10 avatars there are 10 avatars of vishnu krishna rama and many others and the last one was the buddha and the 10th which is yet to come is lord kalki now i was once in a part of bombay called chor bazar thieves market and uh, it was not really a thieves market but a lot of old antiques curios etc used to be sold there maybe there were some stolen items from temples i really don't know but anyway chor bazar was famous world over lot of interior designers etc would come to buy various things so me and a friend of mine had entered this uh, shop and i was very drawn to a marble statue of someone noble riding a white horse i wanted to purchase it i really don't know why because i felt pull to it so my friend told me uh, you better not consider buying that so i said why he said because that is kalki you see kalki comes on a horse that is what it says so i said oh even better if it's the 10th avatar of vishnu i didn't realize that so he said no kalki is not worshiped so i asked why he said because in order for kalki to come things have to be really really terrible then he comes and sorts things out so you know if you worship kalki you're calling all this trouble upon the earth and yourself all the wars and fighting and it will reach such a peak that the avatar will be forced to descend so you better not be part of that destruction that was quite funny one has to be quite careful of all these acquisitions you know because they carry vibrations too like i remember someone telling me that if there is a person who has chanted mantras all their life and they gift you like an ornament they've been wearing like a bangle let's say that's a most beautiful blessing to receive because it will carry their vibration but god forbid if the opposite happens you know and you receive something from someone who's uh, let's say life negative under depression down in the dumps etc so that object would also carry that vibration perhaps this is uh, this calls for another podcast on vibrations and whatever i have learned from various teachers masters on it but uh, let's leave that for now and this last one we will end on one should always have implicit faith in the master in the self then he is automatically free there are two powers and these are the powers master is the father and disciple is the child when they become one they become greater than the whole universe after understanding the knowledge of the self if one worships the master then he is greater than the person of highest realization my words will be as useful as the wish fulfilling tree those disciples of the master who absorb my sermons as nectar fate will ensure their well being upon them alone will fate bestow the auspicious when the ocean of knowledge is churned the nectar accrues only to the true disciples of the master 
those who have complete unconditional faith in Him. This knowledge will fructify only for those who are faithful, who are dedicated devotees of the Master. Friends, your Master ultimately refers to consciousness, not just the form which sometimes we may get stuck on, the form of the Master. Yes, that is the aspect in manifestation, but as even Nisargata Maharaj would keep pointing out, the Guru is consciousness. I hope you enjoyed this podcast. Thank you.